It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for Aquarium Run and Magic V Show. I'm Craig. And I am uh... Clue, it's on the t shirt. I'm right. That's it. And welcome <laughs> to another review show right here on Another Clue. TV. There you go, I knew you'd get there in the end. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV. This week we are looking up five tricks. We're only performing one of them because... Sorry, we're only performing one, <laughs> four of them because one of them is the oh, biggest boy. pile of poop I have ever seen in my entire life and wouldn't fool a blind monkey. You're going to you're gonna find out more about that trick a little bit later on, but right now we're going to be looking at a very hyped-up trick. Let's have a look at this one first. It's a brand-new plotted magic, never seen before. It's called Any Card at Any Number. So first up, we have the Alpha Numeric Deck by, uh, I believe this is Juan Pablo. Uh, Juan Pablo's the Alpha Numeric Deck. And this has had, yes it is, Alpha Numeric Deck by Juan Pablo. Uh, this has had quite a bit of fuss about it on the Magic Cafe. Myself and Lloyd talked about this uh, on the Magic Podcast. And it's a little bit confusing in terms of the ad copy to kind of work out what's going on. Because it says it does this, it does this, it does this. And it's a very confusing sort of thing. Well, what is it exactly? Now I've got it, I can tell you exactly. It's a gimmick deck of cards. I say gimmick, there's not really a gimmick in there, but there is a particular, um, it, is, it is special. So it's a special deck of cards. And what this special deck of cards allows you to do is three separate routines. I'm gonna do a performance of one of them in a minute, uh, but let me tell you what those three routines are. The first version of it is an any card at any number, where somebody thinks of a card, somebody names a number, um, and you count to that number and then spell the card and the card will always be in that position. The second card, the second trick is more of a, um, uh, is more of a sort of a traditional any card at any number. You name a card, uh, you name a number and, uh, and, and the card appears at that number. And the third one is somebody names a card and you name a number and the card is at that number in the deck. Those are the three routines. Yeah. Now, we're going to go through the pros and cons of each one of them. Uh, and we're going to start off, though, by looking at a performance of the main routine. This is the main routine. I'm going to perform it to Ryland right now, and then we'll talk about exactly what we think. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to show you a trick. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to show you a card trick. It's a trick that you might not have heard of before. It's quite a unique plotted magic. It's called the any card at any number. <laughs> Some magicians call it A-can. It's another day. It's another A-can. I got 52 cards. This is a little bit different. I want you to think of a number. Um, think of a number from 1 to 52. Okay. Don't say anything. Just think of one. Have you got one? Uh, yeah. Good. Now I also want you to think of a card. So um, I'm going to spread through the deck. I'm going to. I just want you to look over the spread, think of one card, and remember it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Have you got one? You got one. You got one. Yeah. Good. So you're now thinking of a card. I couldn't possibly know what card you're thinking of because you obviously are just thinking of it. But I want you to at the same time tell me what number it was that you were thinking of. Twenty-six. Twenty-six, really. Mm -hmm. Now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to mix these cards up because obviously you know roughly where that card was that you were thinking of. So I'm going to give the cards a few cuts and a bit of a, uh, a shuffle just to make sure that everything is completely mixed up. Now you still haven't told me the name of the card or anything, have you? No. Here's what's going to happen. In a second, I'm going to count to the number that you said and I'm going to spell to your card. And believe it or not, when I get to the end, your card will be in that position. Okay. Watch. What was the number? Uh, 26. So make sure I don't do any cheating. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And then what was the card? It was the 4 of it. So we go F. O U R, then of O F C L U B S. That's that one. Now, if it had been a different card or you'd said a different number, we would have ended up on the Seven of Diamonds. That's not your card. If you'd have gone one card more, you would have ended up on the Jack of Spades. That's not your card. But that is the card at the 20th position, 26th position, plus four of clubs. And believe it or not, that is your four of clubs. Okay, so that's the main routine on the project. You don't yeah. like this at all, do you? You said to me, really. like when I first showed him this, he was like, well, that's obvious how that works. Like it, it was like, and I agree with him to be honest, I'm not too keen on this at all. Let's, first of all, that first routine, 
Let's talk about the pros. First of all, it is a freely named number. They can name any number they want to. Um, and they feel like they can pick any card because you spread through and you go, I hey, look at a card. I know you didn't, and we'll get to that in a minute. But it's not like you're saying to them, it's not like you're doing a riffle force or something. No. You're spreading the cards out and you say, think of one of these cards and the card appears at that number. You do the dealing yourself. So, this, I mean, it, it, it's self-working and it's an yeah. instant reset. Those are the, uh, the positives. Here's the negatives. The deck is set up. I don't really want to talk about what the setup for the deck is, but the way the deck is set up, they're limited in terms of the choices they can make in terms of a playing card. Yeah. And I've done this now on about five or six people, including a couple of lay people. And when I review stuff in the review show, a lot of the time I'll actually show it to lay people and I'll say, hey, what did you think of that? Have you got a solution? And a couple of people, pretty much everyone said, hey, I think I know how that works. And they've all said to me, I spotted duplicates of the card I was thinking of, or they've said, hey, I think there was more than one card in the deck. And 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 I, I think that's a, a serious problem because when you're spreading through the cards and you say, think of a card, it's not like the, the mind- The card that I picked, I just saw it, and then I looked through to see if I wanted a different one, and then I just saw it over and over again. Yeah, over. it's not like the Mind Power deck where you see a bunch of different cards and then they look at one, or the Accumulator deck, which we reviewed a while ago, which also has that system. That has not got that system based into it. You spread through the cards, they're going to have a very limited choice of cards. They need to look for like literally one second. Um, that's the first negative. The second negative, because of the way the deck's set up, you can't deal the cards face up. I really do believe that when you're dealing with an any card at any number, you should be able to turn the cards face up one at a time so you can see that the cards are all different as they go past. You can't do that with this deck. Uh, also, it's kind of a little bit weird saying that, hey, you need to spell to the card after getting to the number. I mean, you could maybe cover that. You probably could cover that presentationally. The reason you have to do that is because of the method. From the methodology point of view, you have to do that. But in reality, it, it's... It's not a particularly great way to. Yeah. Uh, it's not a particularly great way to. You know, it's, it's just. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, don't, really like, it. don't like that very much at all. Um, the deck cannot be examined afterwards, which is another problem. The... Well, yeah, they would immediately yeah. see how the trick works, so the yeah. deck can't be examined afterwards. And th th there was one other point as well that I was trying to make, and I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah, so when they name the number. Once you've named the number, you have to manipulate the cards. You have to shuffle the cards. Now, for me, the best any cards are any number where you put the deck on the table and you say, hey, name a number, and then you just deal. You can't do that with this. You have to manipulate the cards. Now, they don't have to name the card until you start dealing, but they do have to name the number. Yeah. Now, the second version is flawed as well because in the second version, which is kind of more of a pure any card at any number, um... Without, I don't want to actually uh, to, to, to do this right now, but the idea is that you bring a deck of cards out and you do the same thing. So you'd spread it to somebody and say, think of a card. Have you got one? Yeah. Now you put the cards back in the box and you have somebody name a number. You see there, and I only saw... I only saw three of the duplicates. I mean, still seeing looking. three of them is not yeah. good. Yeah, because I was looking, because I, obviously I know how it worked, but there was still three of them that yeah, I could see. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they, you put the cards back in the box, and then you say, and name a number, and then what you have to do is you have to do a little bit of um, mental work, not much, but a little bit of mental work, and then what you have to do is take the cards out of the case. If you know Assy wins any card at any number, you'll know what you have to do at this point. So it becomes kind of more of a difficult move to do in this particular routine. And also, it doesn't make any sense. You have to take the cards out in order to get them to think of a card. But then you put the cards back in the box only for a second later to take them out again, which doesn't make any sense at all. So for me, that's not a great version. It's kind of like, it's almost like they threw it in there because they knew that they needed to put a more pure any card at any number in, I don't know. And then the final version is they, they think of a card and you tell them the number that the card's at, which is a bit dumb if you ask me because you could just do that with the moniker. Jack of Hearts. 20. Boom. King of Diamonds. 26. Five of Clubs. Dude. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you always let me down there. Um, like, but you could do that with a regular deck of cards that could be examined afterwards. I mean, you know, why would you, you want to do that?
do that with this where a death really severely can't be examined. So those are the three routines. The tutorial has no live performances. It's a decent tutorial. They cover exactly what they need to cover. You'll learn exactly what you need to learn. But for me, this is a step backwards. If you're wanting to do, you know, there's a million any card at any numbers that are that are better than this, in my opinion. Um, and, and this doesn't really add anything. Um, in fact, the fact that I really think that they're going to want to examine the deck, the fact that you spread through the cards and you say, think of a card, they want to examine the deck and the deck just really can't be examined. If you like the idea of this, having someone think of a card and having someone name a number, then go for the accumulator deck that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago yeah, by David, that's, uh, that's really good. David Penn. It's a really much, good. yeah, it's a much better version of this style of plot as it stands. This is getting 0% from me. I really Same. don't like it. I think it's a complete waste of money. Uh, the deck was very... It would have cost virtually nothing to put these decks of cards together. This is... You could, you could, you could make this up for probably a pound fifty. So the price that they've charged is just insane, if you ask me. Um, but, you know, it's their choice to charge whatever they want to charge. I just think that for what you're getting, 0%. It's absolutely not worth the money. So next up, we have Loops Legends by Yeagle Masika. Now, Loops have been around for years. Uh, Penguin have Ties, which are their version, which we'll review at some point soon. Um, but Loops were the originals. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure everybody knows what Loops are. What they are basically is a piece of elastic. Well, no, no, no. Loops is pretty much everybody kind of knows what Loops are now. I'm not going to. Yeah, you know, oh. it, it's it. The loops have been around for years. I know you've never seen loops before. Ryland's loops. Ryland's first foray into loops. Didn't know you do a lot of stuff with, uh, like you That's do all you do all of the uh, Lazander stuff with bubbles. You do all of the stuff with you do gravity. Yeah. You do dancing Hanks. You do dancing Kane. You do a lot. He's never seen loops before, and I've just blown his <laughs> mind by showing him some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but so everybody here is aware of loops. If you aren't, it's a piece. It's a loop of invisible elastic thread that allows you to do um, absolute miracles. I will say, for anybody who's interested, the best trick with loops, as far as I'm concerned, is Ring Slide by Justin Miller. It is incredible, and I've never seen a trick with loops that's as good as that. Having said that, Loops Legends is an almost two-hour download of routines with loops by some of the best magicians and mentalists alive today. Um, people like Garrett Thomas, people like Colin McLeod, um, you know, uh, uh, so many incredible magicians have come together on this project along with Eagle to demonstrate some really awesome routines. Wow. Now, there's about 15 different routines. If you ever wanted to learn how to do loops, this is the project you want to get, even if you don't use loops, and I know some people have said to me, I don't use loops, I love use ties. I would still get this because it is an absolutely fantastic way of learning some incredible material. And, and, and loops are great. I've been using them for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, what you get in the package is you get access to the tutorial, you get a pack of loops, and you also get this really cool credit card. And this credit card just goes inside your wallet, and Ryland's nicked this already. Mm -hmm. And inside, it, it looks like a credit card. It, but it opens up and it holds your loops. So if and you're out and about, and when that. you get to a gig and you want to, uh, oh, you, they? you know, of course. Hang on, let me just look at them. What's the matter? Oh, I thought they all got stuck into one bit then. No, no, they haven't. No, no, no. So, uh, you know, one of the problems has always been transporting loops, but with this, you just pop them inside here, it magnetically it, shuts. It looks like. Um, Looks yeah, like a credit card, doesn't it? Looks it? like a membership card. Looks like an inner circle magic membership card or something inner like circle. that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's got it's got like an expiry date. No. Beginning day. Yeah, I know. Now, here's the thing. It's really the, cool. It is very cool. Now, here's the thing. There are, over the project, probably about 15 or 20 different routines with loops. Uh, there's floating straws. There's routines where straw... Uh, Garrett Thomas does this thing where a pen spins round. They've got the spinning fork that makes it look like you can spin a fork around and around and around again. You've got an incredible trick where a spoon just held here 
flies into your hand. You've got the routine where Garrett does, where a, spoo, uh, where a, uh, a straw is in a drink and you just knock it out. There's a trick where a lime gets knocked into a drink. There's so many. There's the floating card. Uh, Jeff Kayla does that. That's really cool. Um, there's so many different routines. but And you're in the middle of learning all of them, aren't you? But the ones that Ryland's specifically seen and really likes at the moment is you the like, only ones that you've shown me. The only ones that I've shown you. Well, those are the ones that you practiced, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, the first one is... A lot of cool the first one, which I still think is one of the best impromptu... Well, I say impromptu, you need the loops with you. But I think it's one of the best close-up tricks that there is, which is uh, the glasses routine. Now, uh, you borrow oh, a pair of glasses. Sick. Yeah, you borrow a pair of glasses and you just do this incredible trick. Ryland's done it on his Instagram. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you see this. We're going to play the Instagram video that you did. And you can look at this. Um, and, and then we'll talk about this particular routine. Yeah. Okay, so I'm here with my dad and I'm going to borrow his glasses. So can I borrow your glasses, dad? You want to borrow my glasses? Yes, I do. There you go, buddy. Okay. Right. So I've got your glasses here, yeah? Yes, you have. These are your glasses. Yes, they are. Right. Would you like to do something magical? Well, I can't really see much because you took my glasses, but yeah, well, go on. Uh, <laughs> well, right. Watch. What? I just made your glasses. Look, you can check that. So that's cool, right? You can that's check that out. That's insane. Sick. That's sick, right? What? For me, that is, I mean, ridiculously strong. Yeah. Like, ridiculously strong. You borrow a pair of glasses, you put them down on the table, you concentrate, and they flip up. Yeah. I mean, what's not to you're love? Like, you're, you're literally like, can I borrow your pair of glasses? Right, okay. Right. And it lifts up and then... This is something that you could do on stage. I know this we're talking about yeah. close up here, yeah. but if you got a volunteer to come up that was helping you in the dancing Hank, for example, yeah. and you said, Look, hang on, before you did the dancing Hank, because your presentation with dancing Hank is all about ghosts, you could even say, Ghosts are all around us. Uh, in fact, there's a friendly ghost here tonight called Hank. Let's see if we can find him. Can I borrow a pair of glasses? And you put the glasses on the table on stage and you, you just see, do Hank this. Hank loves lifting glasses up. Yeah, watch. And you do that with the glasses before you then go in. Well, let's see if we can manifest him. We'll get this handkerchief and we'll make him appear in these handkerchiefs. I mean, that would just be incredible. That would just be incredible. Um, but your second favourite routine is the one with the pencil, isn't it? Or the pen. Yeah. Where you... That's um, a really nice one. Yeah, where you take the pen and you just go... And it just like literally just flies out of the person's hand. Yeah. Um, and you did that as well, didn't you, on Instagram? Yeah. You did it on Thea. So we'll have a look at that as well. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at this. This is uh, this is a really strong trick that also uses loops. This is another one that Eagle teaches on the uh, on the tutorial. Let's have a look at that right now. I'm here with my dad, and I'm going to show him my psychic powers. You've okay. got psychic powers. Yeah. So what I like to do is I like to hold the um, the pen gently, uh, gently with your thumb and your forefinger. Yeah. You got it, man. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Okay. Right. Let's see something magical. My psychic powers. You got psychic powers. Yeah. This is freaking me out already. Ready. Right. What are you going to do? Whoa! Whoa, that feels weird. Yeah, right? It was moving. <gasps> what? That's cool, right? That is insane. That's cool. Now, one of my favourites was Colin McLeod with his psychic touches routine. I mean... Oh, that is sick. You show me that. It's just incredible. Oh, that's sick. So if you've ever wanted to do PK touches... Colin McLeod goes through a way of doing PK touches. You basically just... Right, now. Did you feel any? Now, if you... So you get them to close their eyes and you go... Now, when, um, when, I, when you open your eyes, I'm going to ask you a question. And then you touch them. Mm -hmm. And then they open their eyes and I said, did you feel anything? And they said, yeah. And you say, uh, where did that... Where, what was it? Where was it? And they say, there and there. And that's where you touch that person. And then you look. In fact, we'll swap it around this time. You close your eyes so you can see. And then you do the same, basically the same thing, but on the opposite side. It's killer. It's absolutely killer. You could do that on stage in front of a thousand people and blow people away. You could do it close up in a bar and blow people away. Just that routine is worth the price of the project and them some. 
Um, the floating ring is incredible. Eagle goes through his floating ring. Um, this is a great project. This is an incredible project. Loops is such a uh, an awesome tool for any magician. Uh, and even if you're scared of uh, invisible thread, uh, loops makes it very, very accessible. It is very strong. Loops. It's very, very strong. It's very strong thread. Very strong thread. I'm going to give this 100%. I think this is an amazing project. I'm so glad that Yeagle managed to get all these incredible names together to teach the, what I consider to be the ultimate course on routines with loops. And this has made him want to start doing loops now so you know mm. you've got another loop user here which i think is probably why loops legends was released in the first place 100 percent from me what about you uh 100 percent 100 percent from maybe, Ryland, even trick of the week. maybe even trick of the week please remember that ryland that this is trick of the week because oh, there's an alakazam the coming up the there's an alakazam trick coming up right now but ryland said this is no, trick of the week not, i think this is trick of the week more, but you know you know more. it's up no, to you remember what we have next Let's let's look at the next product. So next up, we have Flash Prediction by Alakazam Magic, your favourite magic shop. And this is Paul Gordon, uh, who you went to see in lecture at the IBM. Remember, he was in that little room to one side and you were sitting there watching him do card tricks and blowing his mind, blowing your little mind. Luckily, there weren't long, boring card tricks. There weren't long, boring card tricks. There were, there were very interesting card yeah, tricks. Very yeah. interesting. There you go. Paul Gordon does not they do They were long, long, they were short. But they were interesting, not yeah. boring like this. Anyway, <laughs> I refuse to listen to you. I'm going to do a really interesting <laughs> trick right now because I'm going to perform Flash yeah, Prediction. Yeah, because it's Paul Gordon's, not it's, yours. It's not mine. If you don't know what uh, Paul Gordon's Flash Prediction is, it is a self-working, multi-reveal prediction effect. I think Paul Gordon has become known now for the kicker finish. He can't just do a trick. He has to do a trick and have 15 kickers. Um, and and, and d d watch for the kicker. Because this is another Paul Gordon kicker. I saw, I saw the kicker coming. Though. I know you saw the kicker I saw coming. The kicker. I actually didn't show him this. I, the, the performance you're about to see was the first time he saw it. We then went off and I taught at you. And, we, you know, we looked at the tutorial together. Yeah, because as, as soon as you showed the four cards at the end, like, I'm like, right, I know what's coming now. Now, now I know what they it's are. A, it was such a it's, cool and, moment. And, and the fact that you poured them in the order. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that, in all fairness. That was my fault. Let's have a look at the performance so they know what we're talking about, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about what the trick's like. So remember when you were a kid, I mean, you're still a kid, but you remember <laughs> when you were a little kid, a baby kid, yeah. and we were trying to teach you to read. We used yeah. flashcards. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've used flashcards to help you with your maths when you were little and also to help you with geography. Now, now your geography is pretty good, but back then this is terrible. It was terrible. Now, these are the countries of the world flashcards. I've also got a prediction on the other side. I'm going to put that over there. We'll get back to it in a bit, okay? It goes right there. Now, all of these are different um, places. You've got Hung Uruguay, Rwanda, Egypt, Poland, Norway, Italy... Germany, Japan, and Peru. And on the other side, you've got the letters of all of these places, you see. Notice the N has an X. There's a reason for that. You'll see that in a bit. Um, so, for example, and it's all the first letter of each country. So, you know, I mean, you probably know this now, but if I said to you, what's the J, what would you say? Germany. No, that's with a G, Ryland. <laughs> Obviously, we need to work on English. <laughs> Japan. Japan. Oh, yeah, Japan. Yeah. Japan. Anyway, give them a shuffle. Great magician. Terrible at spelling. <laughs> Give them a shuffle. That's a shuffle with a C. Token. It's just S. Okay. No, no. You done? Yeah. Great. Now turn them over. And what I want you to do is deal them out in the three by three grid. Now that, that would be a four by... <laughs> What's up with you today, bro? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> So this kind of becomes a little bit of a map, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, kind of becomes. It's a map. It kind of becomes a little bit of a map, doesn't it? A little bit, a little bit of a map. Uh, we'll mix them round uh, a little bit more. Uh, we'll we'll move that one there. We'll move that one there. I'm actually going to put Norway in the middle, if that's okay. Why? Because Norway is the one with the X on it, and if this really is a map. X map marks the spot, and the X is always in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. I want to pretend this is a map, and you know like when you fold a map up, you fold it. We're going to fold this map up, and you get to decide everything. So first of all, do you want to fold this side up, this side up, this side up, or this side up? Whichever you say, we'll turn them over and fold it over. 
that one over. So we're going to do that, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, where do you want to go? We can go that way again, or that way, or that way, or that way. It's totally up to you. That. That way? Okay. Now what? That way. That way. And then finally, one last decision. That, that way, like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Is that fair? Aye. So you mixed them up and turned them over and everything was your decision, right? Yeah. So we'll take all of the face down ones out. So we'll take out the, uh, there's a U and there's an R and there's an E and there's a P, yeah? Yeah. Those are the ones. After you mixed it all up, those are the ones. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got Poland. We've got Egypt. We've got Rwanda. And we've got Uruguay. Yeah? Really nice Poland, Egypt, Rwanda, and Uruguay. And check this out. I said there was a prediction on the other side. I actually predicted which countries you'd be left with. And if you have a look here, you can see the countries will be Egypt, Poland, Rwanda, and Uruguay. I think but it I also see what's says, come. and. I think I see what's come. Yeah, Peru. Yeah, I thought that was coming. And the reason yeah. is P E. Ah, uh, yeah. That's not that coming, but that is, that is pretty good. That's so cool, that's it? the trick. And you know what? That folding principle has been done many, many times. More recently, we reviewed Morigami You've recently. Done You've done it. I have a project coming out, and one of the routines in that project involves the folding principle. But we can't say what the trick is. We can't say what the trick it's is. It's secret. It's secret. It's secret. It's secret. But you are right. One of the routines on that project does use the folding principle. So I'm very aware of the folding principle. Uh, I think used uh, it. <laughs> I've used it. Chris Congreve had uh, Canopoly uh, recently. And, and anyone that's seen it, well, I don't think anyone has seen it, but if Nobody's you do, if you do see it, it you, you'll know what the project is. You'll know what the project is. It's coming out soon. It's coming out soon. It's my next month. You probably release. won't see it because it's not out yet. It's not out yet. Shut up. <laughs> right. Um, but this folding principle has been around forever. What, what Paul's done, which is a really clever use of it, is he's taken this folding principle and he's applied it to uh, sort of flashcards that look like countries, which is great because if you were going to fold something, you'd fold a map. So it kind of makes sense. Presentationally, it absolutely makes sense. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it's only using three by three. A lot of the uh, routines that use the folding principle use more than nine cards. He's only using nine cards, so that's over very, very quickly. And it, it just seems really fair, because the predictions put down there from the beginning, um, you take the cards, you lay them out, they shuffle, they put them out, you mix them up a bit more, and then they can fold it however they want to. There's no um manipulation at all in terms of how to fold it and then immediately you take the cards out and you show that you've pre uh, predicted it mm -hmm. and then you've got that final prediction of peru and you turn it over and it's peru it um it's great sick. and it's instantly repeatable it's completely examinable um it's uh it's there's no sleight of hand there's no nothing it's just a very easy trick yeah. to do um, the only thing that you need to be aware of is obviously you're going to need some table space to be able to do it. It's not the sort of thing that you can do as a strolling performer because you are going to need a table in order to do this routine. You can't just like, you know, you can't, you can't just you can't make the cards float in the air no, no, is what I'm trying to say. I know. So you are going to need table space. But other than that, this is a super commercial trick. You'll well, The tutorial is like 20 minutes long. Yeah. It's uh, Paul Gordon sitting in the garden with Graham Jolly and some other bloke um, going through uh, the performance and the explanation. doesn't need to be any more than that. It's very um, uh, easy. I mean, just, just, you saw what you saw. If you like it, it fits in your wallet. It's a small little packet, fits in your wallet. It's really, really good. I'm going to give it... I know you want it, don't you? I'm going to give it... 92 percent i think this is really good uh and i think that you know it's different it's not a card trick it's not a coin trick uh it's yeah, something it's kind that of a card trick. it's not a card trick there are cards. it's not a card trick. It's not, really a card. it's not a card trick people won't look at this and go that's a card trick <laughs> you stand on stage every night or most nights when you perform your stage show and you go i'm gonna have you pick a card but it's not a card trick, it's a cube trick. And you go into Cube Buster with a card revelation. Then you do Dancing Hank and you go, I'm going to get you to pick a card. But it's not a card trick because I'm using a handkerchief. It's still a bloody card trick. And then, 
And then what do you do? Oh, yes. Yes, you even try to make people convinced that card sword isn't a card trick, which is blatantly pick a card, shuffle it back in the pack, and you shove it on a sword. That's a card trick. So if they are, if, but you say they're not card tricks, this is not a card trick. This is a map trick. 92%. <laughs> Tell the camera what you're giving this. 120%. 120%. What a surprise. 120% from Ryland. Really, Not really, is it? Not really. 120% from Ryland. 93% from me. I've, I've upped it a percent. 93% from me. It was 92. I know, I've just put it up at a percent. 93% from me. Make it above me. It's one of the best map tricks I've ever seen. It is. 90... Car no, card tricks. We're moving on now. Review number four today we have Dusty by Lehman Magic. And this is a, what does it say? Contains four dust bunnies. Contains four where, dust where? bunnies. It says there, contains four dust bunnies. And it does. Um, this is basically sponge balls, but, but with, with dust bunnies. Um, Ryland's going to do a performance. I love this show. I think this is amazing. This is my new sponge ball. <laughs> this is great. This is going straight in your close-up case. <laughs> um, look, well, not just, my close-up case, my new table. Oh, look at you, la -di da with your new table. We'll talk about that on a review show special coming soon. Uh, let's have a look at a performance of this. Uh, let's do that right now. Okay, now uh, people wouldn't believe this if I said this is your phone because um, you don't have Annie on the front. Everyone sees that on my phone. I've got Annie on the Instagram. So uh, I've got my phone here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I've just cleaned yours out, but uh, shouldn't have done that because I could have used your phone. But I've just cleaned yours out, but Do you I? don't know, but I cleaned it out. Uh, you see, I've cleaned dust out of your phone. My, and, uh, my phone doesn't have any dust in it. Well, yeah, if it, if you get too much dust in, it will stop working. In where? Inside? Yeah, in a couple of days, yours was going to start working, but um, luckily, I got the dust out. Really? Yeah. Uh, mine's still got the dust in, and mine's going to stop soon, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the dust out and free, so you can see me get the dust out, okay? Okay, okay. okay. Yeah? Right. Okay. <laughs> right, okay, so uh, look inside. What are you doing? I can see some. I can see some. Do you see some what? Dust. I can't see anything. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to get it out. What? <sighs> what? A little ball of dust. Now, um... What? Well, oh, there's one at the back. Right, hang on. Okay, right, I got it. Right, there we go. That's two. That's crazy. It's crazy, right? Look, the thing is, because they're made out of dust, they can go, and they can come back. Okay. Look, if I put one in this hand, one in this hand, they can jump. Can they? Yeah, did you see that? I'll yes. do it again. Look, one in that hand, one in that hand, jump. Okay, that's weird. Look, which one would you like? That one. That one, okay. So this one goes in my hand, and this one goes in your hand. Close your hand tightly, turn it over. Okay, so now, mine's gone, look in your hand. <laughs> you see, yours has got this in it. Yes. Look, I'm going to put one in my pocket. Okay. There. And uh, one in my hand. Okay. How many are in my hand? One. No. It's a three dusty trick. Well, where did the third dust ball come from? Magic. Magic. <laughs> yeah. One in the pocket. Okay. One in the hand. Mm hmm. One in the pocket. Mm hmm. How many? There's one dust ball in there. No, you've got to remember there's three. Where did it come from? How did it get there? What's going on? I'm currently <laughs> questioning life itself. This is weird. Look. One in the pocket. Yeah. One in the hand. One in the pocket. How many in the hand? Three. No. No. So that's the routine. And what you get is you get a tutorial that explains how everything works. And you get four little... Dust buddies. Dust buddies. And these bunnies. Bunny. Oh, that's what he calls it. He calls it buddies. 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 It's buddies. Oh, buddies. I think in America, when these balls of dust, they call them dust bunnies. So I think oh, yeah, it, bunnies. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're not a bunny. They're not rabbits or anything, but they call them dust bunnies. Um, and, and and basically they're sponge balls, but they look like big pieces of dust. 
And it's an amazing idea because when you pull a sponge ball out... a little bit harder than a normal A little bit harder, but only just... What I like about these, by the way, for anybody who does sponge balls, obviously, at one point, you're squidging the two of them together in order to hide the fact that there's... Yeah, 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 just look at that. Because of the shape of them, when you squidge them together... You can't tell those two. It's so deceptive, you just can't tell. So when you're in this point and you're loading it into the hand, you can be very, very, very free and very clean about this, which is really cool. I really love that as an idea, that the shape of them just really sell it. But my favourite part is when you pull it out the phone. Yeah. Like, I love that. Like, yeah. you did this on Instagram a little while ago and, and got yeah. uh, a lot of traction on it. I just, I, basically, all you're doing is you're just going to put them here. Just pull them out the phone. Out but when you pull them out the phone, it really looks like you're pulling them out of their phone. Yeah, because you can have it here. I saw. I, I, I did it like this once, and it literally. Look at that. Yeah, it looks I'm great. Like, I'll do it from here, from the start. <laughs> yeah, looks great. Ryan and I were doing a close-up job the other day, and he was doing this, and. I was watching the person he was performing this for. He'd borrowed their phone and he was pulling this out the uh, out the uh, the charging socket of their phone. And they were like, oh, I didn't know I had that in there. Like they were completely buying into this 100%. And then you pull it out. And it's just it's just such a cool premise to produce these things before you well, go into How would they fit form. in there? Exactly. I don't... Uh, right. I've not really ever been a massive advocate for sponge balls in a close-up environment because everybody does them. But I don't think people will think of these as sponge balls. I think that that revelation there, where you pull it out, is amazing. They're you dust, then go, they're pieces of dust are not sponge balls. Exactly. How can you think of them as sponge balls, Daddy? Exactly. They're, they're, dust, they're made out of dust, not sponge balls. I love this. Uh, we need to order another one because obviously yeah, this mind. is this no, is yours. yours. Um, yours. But I love this. I think this is amazing. Also going in the table. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do this. I don't normally do this sort of magic, uh, but this has opened up an entire new world of uh, routining for me. I love this. I'm giving this one hundred percent. I think this In is the great. Table it goes. What are you giving it? Uh, 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 not yet. Ninety eight percent. I don't blame you. It's great. Ninety eight percent from Ryland. One hundred percent from me. Uh, if you want to make your sponge ball routine more logical. Uh, you know, the Len and Magic have come out with some crackers recently. Yeah, Last week yeah. we did the autograph book, yeah. which I thought was really good. This week they've got this. And then uh, next week we're doing Chaka Chaka. That's not them, that's Tora Magic. Oh, not no, it. that's not Tora Magic. That's not them. Yeah. That's a, that, but we have, got, else. we have got other stuff from Len and Magic. Obviously, I saw it. I saw something else. Yeah, yeah we have. Thing. We have. Yeah, it's up at the house. It's a jumbo version of Charming Chinese Challenge oh, with jumbo yeah. coins. Wasn't that there was something else? Who cares? They'll find out in a future episode. It's not on this one. We've got... Remember at the beginning... Was. Nobody cares. Shut up. Remember... The... <laughs> Why don't you, you talk too much? No one talked too you much. You never let me talk. You haven't <laughs> shut up, this one. Just literally haven't <laughs> shut up. Have you? Brief. <laughs> Remember at the beginning of the review show, we talked about the terrible pile of steaming poop that is poop. the worst trick that we've seen so far this year. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> Here it comes. Okay, so next up, we have this. This is what you get. Pick. Crunch <laughs> by Che Won Sok. Coin through snack. Now, I'm not performing this. I'm not performing this in any way, shape or form. I'm just going to tell you all the different ways that it's terrible. So first of all, and it is. So first of all, the tutorial is diabolically bad. <laughs> No live performances and just somebody sitting at the table that really doesn't know how to explain tricks. <laughs> this is the gimmick. I'm not going to show you the gimmick. Right. This is I'm literally covering the gimmick up with my forefinger. So this is the gimmick right here. So you get your little gimmick, little being the operative word, and you get your little brown envelope. And here's what, um, here's what it is. It's called coin through snack. So the idea is that you would show... A bag of crisps. You could even borrow a bag of crisps or a bag of candy or something like that. And you take your bag of crisps and uh, <laughs> you, take, you take your bag of crisps, right? And then what you do is you have a half dollar uh, and you have them sign the half dollar. And then once they've signed the half dollar, you take it and you throw it. They're holding on to the bag of crisps. 
you're throwing it at the bag of crisps <clears throat> and 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 it goes through and then you open it up but you open it in a very weird way you open it up and you tip them all out into a mixing bowl and when you do the coin is inside the bag of crisps that's basically the effect now let me talk to you about all the ways this is flawed because first of all what you need to understand, yeah, the one positive of this is that you can borrow the bag of crisps. But let's be honest, the easiest way of doing this, if you were, first of all, a coin isn't the best thing to put into a, a bag of crisps. The, uh, if, if I was going to do this, I'd take, a bag, I'd take a bag of crisps, I'd put in a £10 note, um, I'd, or I'd put in a playing card or something, and I'd use a heat sealer to seal it back up, and I'd do a you know a torn corner principle or something like that. The only advantage of this is that you can borrow the bag of crisps, but that is literally the only advantage. So first of all, this really has to be a half dollar because the gimmick, the gimmick, the gimmick is designed to fit on a half dollar. So you have to bring a half dollar out and have it signed, and while it's being signed, the idea is. The gimmick is on a half dollar and, and it allows you, without giving too much away, to create an opening inside the, uh, on the bag that they won't be able to see. And, and this, this is meant to be done surreptitiously without them noticing. Unfortunately, every time the guy does it on camera, it's about as obvious as you can imagine. Like, it's just completely you obvious. Probably, yeah, you're just going crinkle, 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 it's completely crinkle, crinkle, obvious crinkle, 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 crinkle. what it's doing. And if he was going to do this, there's a million ways of doing it better than using this gimmick. If you're going to create an opening, there's a million different ways of doing this in a, a, in a better way. So first of all, you've now... You've now you know use this gimmick to create this thing and then you get them to hold the bag and you throw the coin at the bag now here's the thing i have experimented with this extensively over the course of about an hour and a half and and one in ten times can i get that coin into that bag and they say on the tutorial well, it might be better if you don't have the spectator hold the bag and instead you 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 tilt it up against a bottle of coke they did say a bottle of coke and and that still doesn't work so it's a very hit and miss thing at the best of times but realistically <laughs> right realistically the second that they see that happen they're going to want to look at the bag and and they can't because here's the thing if you throw something inside a bag and it apparently goes in yeah, the they're method just gonna, they're just going to turn it around and look and they're going to see yeah. a big slit the, me the method is what any lay person would think that the method is right so to cover that that you immediately take the bag off them even though they're holding the bag bang. yeah it's, it's like <clears throat> give me the bag yeah. and then and then what you do is you rip open the bag. But in order to cover the fact that you've made this incision, basically, is what it is. In order to cover that, you open the bag in the middle. Now, I... What? No, no, you do. What? So if this is the bag, you go... And you open it up in the middle what? like that. You don't open it at the end like a normal, sane person. You open it up in the middle. And the reason you open it in the middle is to cover the fact that you've made this incision. But nobody in the entire history of opening bags of chips or crisps or anything would open up. Or as soon as you do that, people would go, well, that's a bit of a weird blood. If I was walking around, if I was in a restaurant, no, no in a cafe, in a food court somewhere, and somebody was eating crisps and they were... I, I kind of think that was a bit of a weird thing anyway. I know that there's some people that will open it up at the end and then open the whole bag up. But you don't start by trying to open it up in the middle. You don't do that. You might open the whole thing up if you want to eat crisps. Or but you don't go right in the middle. <sighs> Honestly, this, this is the sort of thing that I reckon Mr... What's his name again? Chun, Chun, Chun Wan Sok. Mr. Che Wan Sok, I think that here's what happens. I think that what he did is he was going through Amazon one day and he was like, oh, look, there's, there's that there. Oh, that's relatively cheap. Oh, that's a really nice thing. And I reckon he just ordered a hundred of these in or a couple of hundred in. And he's like, right, I can come up with a trick for this. Because this is, the, this is a brain fart. That's what this is. This is, <laughs> this is somebody who's had a really stupid idea for a trick. <laughs> And, and decided to market it before anybody could get to it first and tell him that it was a complete and total stupid idea <laughs> to bring this out. It wouldn't fool a blind monkey. There's a million ways of doing it better. And you look a bit of a Muppet when you're trying to open a bag of crisps like that. You also look a bit of a Muppet when you're doing and this. Also, and uh, also, uh, 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 uh. Nothing to see here. You sign that coin. <laughs> and also, you know, you know it's, only, it's really only possible to open it at the front. Because... Because it's 
like meant to be opened at the top. It's a bit looser at the top. Yeah. But like it's properly sealed. Like two, like it's properly sealed in the middle. And, you, and if you and if you just try to do it normally, it'll just be there for like twenty I know, minutes. No, I know it's ridiculous. But then, but then you, but then uh, you just do it and you're like. <laughs> I can literally think of ten ways of doing this better than this. Like, <laughs> ten ways of doing this, and none of them involve this <laughs> stupid little gimmick stuck on the back of a coin that probably cost them 20 pence and they've sold it for God knows how much. This <laughs> is absolutely, completely, and totally trash. This is the sort of thing that's bad about magic. And I'm sorry, I know it's only my opinion, and it's only his opinion, and there's somebody out there that might be using this and might be killing with it, but I very much doubt it, because if you do want to put something inside a sealed bag of chips there's a billion ways of doing it better than using this nobody is going to use this you wouldn't put this in your bottom drawer because you might accidentally leave it open and stab yourself with it so you wouldn't put it in your bottom drawer but what you might do what you're probably going to do is you're just going to stick it in the bin and that's what we're doing with it put this in the bin carefully because i don't want you to cut yourself open this is getting from me minus 537 billion 327,491 Good luck writing that down, Michael. What are you giving it? Uh, I'm going to give it minus 5,426,595 times 5 times infinity. Okay. <laughs> if Michael manages to get that down at the bottom of the screen, it's a miracle. Right, what he said, what I said, buy beware, don't buy it, it gets Pants of the Week. Right, that's a new award. Pants of the Week. Pants of the Week. Congratulations, Crunch, for winning the Pants of the Week Award right here from Craig and Ryland on Magic TV. Pants of the Week. That's an overview show in the bag. That's an overview show in the bag. That's an overview show in the bag. And a big award for Pants of the Week to whatever. Crunch. Or whatever his name was. Something about socks. Right. She uh, yeah. wore sock. Congratulations, Pants of the Week. Now, that's a new award. New award moving forward when it deserves to be given. Pants of the Week. Don't forget, you want to see more uh, You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to follow him, please do so on uh, on, on Instagram. And uh, while you're at it, by the way, go follow Killian McCann. Um, Killian McCann? Killian McCann? Say the McCann. Follow Killian O'Connor. Sorry. Um, who's just uh, just being on BGT and did a great job. Yay. Absolutely amazing job. Congratulations, Killian, you rock. Uh, go and follow Killian while you're at it. And also, um, don't forget, you want to join the Netflix, please go to... www.thenetrix.cookies Yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, if, if dot .cookies doesn't work, you should try .com. No, just cookies! I don't think it, cookies is even a thing. I don't think cookies is even a thing. It's not even a thing. Cookies. 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 Go to Doc Cookies. It, yeah, yeah, cookies, cookies. We'll be back again next week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.